We are finally in Israel. We just arrived here. This is their airport. It's amazing. And the tour begins. This is day one. We are currently on the way to Mount Zion, which is here right now. We are standing right on Mount Zion and overlooking the city of Jerusalem. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. We are actually about to pass by the Garden of Gethsemane here in a second. Gethsemane is the Greek word for oil press and that's why there's a lot of olive trees here. It's illegal to cut them because it symbolizes peace. This church that is about to come up is a Roman Catholic church called the Church of Agony and it enshrines a piece of a bedrock where Jesus was praying before he was arrested. And here is the Roman Catholic Church of Mary Magdalene where Jesus is said to have said his final prayers before the crucifixion. As the two churches is this Jewish cemetery also located on the Mount of Olives and it is said that there's about 70,000 tombs here from various periods. Alright guys, we're about to visit the King David tomb <laughs> but filming and cameras inside are not allowed so I'm going to turn it off and I'll see you guys later. Well, we entered the King of David's tomb, but this is kind of like the plaza in the middle. And that's our tour guide! Hey guys, we were supposed to go inside the uh, King of David's tomb, and we still are, but we're just waiting right here um, in the center plaza right now for our tour guide to come back. Someone's singing, can you guys hear that? So we are super exhausted because we just um, arrived here in Israel like an hour before we were supposed to go to our tour. So yeah, no sleep for us, but we're here. I think it's really worth it. We have seen so many places in such a short time now and it's just so much information to take. But it's really interesting and uh, super historic here. Alright, now we're inside a mosque. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me, it's really loud in here. But this type of architecture is the archaic type according to our tour guide. And over here you see people just worshipping and singing. And then you also see sculpture of an olive tree which is donated by the Pope. And it's a symbol of um, peace. And then over here um, you can actually tell that this is a mosque because this is a mehrab. I don't know if I'm saying that right but that's the way I heard it. And it's supposed to be facing Mecca which is Saudi Arabia from here because um, that's what they worship um, towards on and that one right there is where speeches are made and they kind of gather around beautiful glass right here beautiful, beautiful glass right be the right right be the, right by the exit of uh, this worship place King David statue is right behind me, right there. Hey, Mama. Mama. <laughs> We're just walking right in between these um, buildings. Someone playing harp. That's pretty cool. We actually lost our tour group. I think they're right there. Right now we're going to check out some of the old Jerusalem city halls. It's pretty cool. All these walls are made of uh, limestones that have been polished. And really cool. Hey, this gentleman is looking at me. Here it is. We're about to enter the old city of Jerusalem. Somebody's selling bread. <laughs> These cobblestones are really slippery, you guys, and they're very uneven. Some of them are really protruding up. So this is the Turkish wall, and this is the wall that is built by the Christian Armenians community of Jerusalem as a part of their defense. 
You guys might wonder why are there an Armenian wall here in Jerusalem? And it's because the first Christians were Armenian, so they built their own quarters here and it's actually the smallest quarter out of all the quarters here in Jerusalem. And right now we're walking towards the Tower of David. I'm going to show you guys a little bit later when we get there. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Oh, car coming. Here it is. This is the fortress, Tower of David. And we are about to enter it right now. We're about to visit this museum right here. And this is actually called the Tower of David Museum of the History of Jerusalem. So it should be fun and exciting and uh, we should be learning a lot on this one. So this bright smaller dome right here is protecting the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. And it's just really pretty cool. This is where Jesus was also buried. Oh, I'm sorry. My mom got mad. This is Jerusalem behind me. And over here are the flags. Mm. Pretty cool. Currently at the top of Tower of David. And you can see this from above here. It's pretty cool. It's an overview of the city. Here's another overview. You can see those are uh, white stones. The beginning of Jerusalem is here, ladies and gentlemen, where my hand is standing. The question is, why King David didn't build his fortress or his palace on one of the high mountains? Mount Zion, Mount of Olives, or Mount Scopus, or even more, Mount Moriah. The reason is quite simple, because in this location, which is weak, strategically speaking, it is also the strongest point in Jerusalem. Why? Because you have the only spring of water here, the Gihon Spring. So it would be only obvious to build a fortress that would be able to protect and defend the water source. Because in case of a siege or a war, you need water, especially here in the Middle East. That's the beginning of the city of Jerusalem. We just finished touring the Tower of David and it's really pretty. I have some pictures. You can follow me on Instagram. You can see my pictures there. Um, and you know, like it was just such a fail earlier because when you guys saw me that I was filming and I said, hey, um, there, there's this guy that was singing or praying, but it actually wasn't. I found out from our tour guide that he was offended that some people, including me, were filming and taking pictures um, you know he was actually trying to tell us like hey I'm offended that you guys are doing this he wouldn't say it directly because that's just how it is and so that's their way of showing it and then a couple of minutes later after I was filming um, I saw a guy that came out that was dressed you know um, religiously and he talked to our tour guide saying that hey we shouldn't film or um, take pictures so I felt really really bad because I didn't know I just uh, I guess I just have to be watchful and also it's really hard to film here in Jerusalem because not only is it a very sacred place um, but because that it's the sacred place a lot of the places that we go to you know it's not allowed to bring a camera it's not allowed to film so I film as much as I can um, on the places that are allowed you know that cameras are allowed but other than that I really can't it's so much information to take in from the tour guide um, because it's just so much history. I mean, it's like 3,000 years of history of Jerusalem. Like right now, we just got done touring the Tower of David um, Museum. And, you know, it's just a lot to take in. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was that tomb of David where we weren't allowed to film earlier. So that tomb right there, they said, was David, but our tour guide said that it's 
probably is most likely not David like he doesn't believe that it is because I guess that tomb and that area was created like in the 12th century and it's just not I guess historic enough you know like old enough for it to make sense that hey King David was buried here and is still here and then the room on top of where his tomb was is supposed to be where um, Jesus and his disciple had the Last Supper and again you know the tour guide said that it's actually it, it just doesn't make sense to him and I agree with that and so on that note he said well we don't really know who is buried in there and that they're just assuming that it's King David and that's the thing that I just want to comment on like if it's not King David in there then you know it shouldn't really be as I guess they shouldn't be portraying it as holy as it is in a sense that you know we're not allowed to bring cameras or cell phones um, but I guess to some extent you know it still has to be respected now we're on the way to a local market bazaar near Tower of David and we're just walking here shopping. The stairs were really steep so I We are going to eat at this restaurant. Well it's more like a small cafeteria here in the middle of the market and it's called Everest. They have three choices for us. The shawarma, which is the chicken with pita, falafel, which is usually for vegetarians, and pizza. And we are all gonna have the shawarma, so super excited. Alright, guys, we are at the Holy Sepulchre Basilica. And um, do you see this ladder right here, this wooden ladder? It represents the um, undivided religions here in Jerusalem and it hasn't been touched in 60 years and wow guys look at this this is the ceiling how beautiful now this is inside the Holy Sepulchre Basilica where um, Jesus was known to be crucified and also his tomb is in here. So let's see if I can film further inside the basilica. Okay, sorry guys, but this part has to be a voiceover because there was so many people inside, so crowded and super loud. But anyway, inside this church, there is a bunch of I guess they call it stations and this station right here is where Jesus was known to be anointed right before he was crucified. I mean this basilica you guys is super sacred. People are coming here to kiss the floors because you know it is the area where Jesus walked, where Jesus was. It is believed that Jesus is buried here and these iron are actually protecting and making sure that the protection is not gonna collapse or anything. They're trying to protect it and preserve. And this is where Jesus resurrected. Where did they get it? What do you mean where? Where, where did they get it? Did they sell it? Well, yeah, you go to a store and you just buy the first time that a young Jewish boy yeah. will be able to use this tefillin will be for his bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. right. So this is the site where people actually move towards the wall and they start praying there and leaving their wishes and prayers and once you get there you're not supposed to turn back because that's considered turning your back away from God instead you're just supposed to walk backwards until you reach a certain point then you turn back and when we get to the western tunnels that's when our tour guide would explain more about the wall the only section of the western wall that is the closest to the holy of the holies is this section Jews can pray here they can they may pray here the problem is that you have a Muslim cemetery here the problem that is the northern wall is basically below the Muslim quarter so that's the only and the closest place to the Holy of the Holies. Remember that Jews cannot pray on top of Temple Mount. Why? Because you have a Muslim shrine. Yeah. 
So here's just more walls in the tunnel and you can see more people praying against these walls. That large rock earlier is actually just part of the um, temple when it was a temple back then but it's just a big rock now and it weighs 55 tons. It's huge. Yeah.